Today we're going to talk about the worst crash that we have seen in cryptocurrencies since 2013. And for those of you who are first-time investors, even if you're not a first-time investor, but especially for those of you that are, this is exceptionally difficult because you know this is the flip side of investing it's not just all making as much money as possible and there is often going to be situations like these where unfortunately you have substantial losses but this is especially true in the cryptocurrency market which is known to be exceptionally volatile it is exceptionally emotionally driven I have been saying that it's a bubble for quite some time now that's not a rubbin that's just how I felt for some time now because of the fact that there's so many emotions driven in this particular market. I mean, if you go on to any of the social media, if you talk to people about cryptocurrencies that have been involved in the space for a while, you know, they talk about oftentimes they're parroting what they hear from other people and they believe that these cryptocurrencies are often far ahead of where they really are. This is a situation that has happened over and over and over again throughout history with technology. And we often like to cite the dot-com bubble, but there have been numerous other examples throughout history. Uh, one of the more recent examples was 3D printing. That was a huge phenomena that is still big and it is still relevant, but in terms of share prices, we saw those skyrocket and then come back down. And again, this is something that we see over and over again where people have this disconnect between where reality is and what their perception is. And really, I think cryptocurrencies exemplify that stronger than anywhere else. So a lot of people have been confused from my last video where I can call Bitcoin a bubble, but still say that I'm going to buy into it as I did at 8,300. And that's a difficult concept for a lot of people to wrap their heads around. So I just wanted to briefly talk about that. It's a bubble because of the market psychology that we're seeing. There's far too many inexperienced investors in this market, and especially when you consider the fact that it's sort of the Wild West, there isn't a lot of regulations here, so it's not a place that a lot of institutional investors want to be for the most part, with the exception of hedge funds, of course, which are looking to maximize their returns. But if we're looking at you know pension funds, they are never going to touch Bitcoin. And that's an important portion of the markets, at least in traditional markets, that will never come into cryptocurrencies until they become a lot less volatile than they currently are and a lot less passion fueled. You know, when you think about what Warren Buffett was saying, how was he able to say so definitively that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies will have a bad ending? Well, it's simply a result of the emotions that he saw in the market. And it's not too difficult to see just how emotionally charged everything is. I mean, if you look at if you say one bad thing about a cryptocurrency that somebody likes or a crowd likes, the reaction that you get out of that crowd, I mean, this channel is the perfect example of how that can happen. It's really a good example of just how much mob mentality we see in this field. And oftentimes that does lead to bubbles. Now, how does that how do I feel that way but still buy into situations like this? And one of my friends actually joked with me saying that, you know, Bitcoin's kind of like having a stealth fighter that can take out a country by itself, which is great and all, but it stops working the second it rains. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of Bitcoin is this very fragile, you know, we talk about Bitcoin as this anti-fragile uh, system from a technological point of view, but from an economical or more importantly, really price standpoint, it's completely different. It's one of the most fragile systems that we've seen because of that disconnect between perception and reality. However, I still think there's going to be a situation here where we see a second wave pump, and that's why I buy into Bitcoin. In fact, that's been the reason I've invested in Bitcoin all this time, is just because I continue to believe that there is going to be an increase in perception, whereas reality, I think, has lagged behind perception for such a long time now. I don't know where reality truly is. Nobody really can say what the, so to speak, intrinsic value of Bitcoin is, but we still haven't reached it yet. We still would have to go, I think, a fair level, a uh, fair way down from here to reach that level. I actually 
wouldn't be surprised if it's as low as like one to two thousand dollars and I know some people don't like hearing that but Again, that's just based off of the fact that, you know, less than 1% of transactions that are done with Bitcoin are done for actual commerce. The rest are used for speculation purposes. And I have a feeling once we see the adoption of SegWit as well as batching by Coinbase and you see those fees go down, you're really going to understand that, you know, a lot of these transactions that we see on the blockchain really have nothing to do with commerce, which is the adoption of Bitcoin. So that's sort of the intrinsic value argument. But the reason I still buy into Bitcoin, the reason I still play bets on it, the reason I still put money into this particular market is just to make money because I believe that the perception is going to change. Again, not investing based off of reality, which I just discussed here, but rather investing based off of changes in perception. And I think that a lot of people missed out on the first wave of cryptocurrencies. They are going to see a situation here where maybe Bitcoin bounces back from this. And Bitcoin tends to bounce back fairly quickly when it does bounce back. So if that situation occurs, I think there's going to be a lot of FOMO. A lot of people are going to be jumping on board. All the people that have held are going to tell their friends, oh, I knew, you know, I knew that I should have held, so on and so forth. And it's just going to be this self-perpetuating cycle and I think a lot of people are going to jump on board. So that's why I decided to buy into Bitcoin, even though, you know, I still think it's a bubble. I still think there's this huge disconnect between perception and reality. But I really just wanted to make this video to hopefully calm some nerves. I know that this is difficult for a lot of people to experience, especially for those of you that have bought you know, 15,000, 16,000, 17,000, even higher. I also have bought at those levels and can experience a little bit of that pain with you. Of course, my cost average is a lot lower than that. I hope yours is as well. But, you know, there's always going to be situations in which you buy at peaks and markets. It's going to be difficult. And if that does happen to you, again, the best advice I can always give people is allocate your portfolio correctly. You know, have money in cash or excuse me, have some of your portfolio in cash, not money in cash, and then have some of your portfolio in stocks or have it in bonds or even, you know, boring savings accounts, CDs and money markets that, you know, we joke about the fact that they don't make any money, but they also don't lose any money either. I know people joke about or they don't really joke. They're serious about the idea that inflation is eating away from your purchasing power. And it certainly is. But fortunately, interest rates help offset that a little bit if you put that money aside and invest it in, you know, short term bonds. So I just wanted to kind of talk about this briefly here because, again, asset allocation is such an important element when it comes to investing. It's not just cryptocurrency investing that this is important in. It's your financial well-being in general. So don't, you know, they say don't risk anything more than you're willing to lose. But there has never been anything more true in cryptocurrencies. And it, it looks like we're, we're seeing a big moment here for Bitcoin. We, and again, this is a situation we've seen over and over for Bitcoin where it suddenly has this massive breakout, this payout moment. And we actually had this earlier. If I pull this back to the five minute candles, I don't know if it will even show up here anymore. Um, let me go ahead and pull back to the 15 minute candles maybe. So I think it was right here back at 4 a.m. here. And yeah, you can see it right here. It was like this huge candle, same situation as what we're seeing right now. And it came back down all the way down here. Who knows what's going to happen? Again, nobody can estimate what happens with these markets. Let me go ahead and get into a little bit more practical advice here uh, for those of you who stay this long into the video. Something that's starting to happen is we are starting to see this Bitcoin dominance figure move up again. It was at 33% just yesterday and now we're up at 37%. And if I go ahead and refresh the page, I'm not sure exactly where that's going to go, but it is going to be worth watching this Bitcoin dominance figure, especially if you are currently invested in Bitcoin and kind of holding the bag. The reason I say this is because a lot of other cryptocurrencies are really tanking against Bitcoin at the moment. I mean, you know, Ethereum was holding its own so well. And then I don't know what happened here, but Ethereum took a dump and so did so many other cryptocurrencies. 
This is the opportunity, not only is it an opportunity to buy Bitcoin, but it is also an opportunity for you to go out and buy other cryptocurrencies that really have moved up against Bitcoin significantly over the past you know, month and a half, maybe two months or so, where really since I would say like mid-December, altcoins were really starting to take off. Looks like we're starting to see Bitcoin come back a little. We still aren't at that 50% dominance figure that I was really looking for Bitcoin to reach, but it should be interesting to see here. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to have limit orders set in at exceptionally low Satoshi levels for a number of other altcoins that I've been interested in. And, you know, for example, I think I'm going to be end up uh, picking up some Monero here and a couple of other cryptocurrencies as well that I've been looking at for a while. So that can be something that's interesting to look into and a way to change something that's rather negative, ideally into something that's a little bit more positive if you can buy into some of these other cryptocurrencies at lower prices. And it does look like Bitcoin is, I mean, look at this. This is a massive candle. This is actually absurd. Look at that candle. That's insane. So we actually just bounced back up above 8,000. That's exciting. Uh, again, might be a dead cat bounce. Never know with these sorts of things. But really the focus of this video was, number one, I wanted to talk about uh, sort of if you're new to investing, I know that this is tough. You're going to have to just stomach your way through it. Selling into these types of events is generally not recommended. I personally would never recommend it myself. It's always going to feel bad if you end up selling, you know, right here and then this candle happens. I can only tell you from prior trading and investing experience that having moments like these happen, even if it's not immediate, I mean, this would be really painful if it immediately happens, but there have been all sorts of situations where it has happened, you know, over the course of a day or a week or a month that feels really bad. So I generally don't recommend selling into situations like these, but if you are overexposed into the cryptocurrency market, start considering allocating yourself a little bit more intelligently into other asset classes, even if that other asset class is just cash, for example. Okay. And then the other points about this video was talking about how I can think that Bitcoin is a bubble, but still invest in it at the same time. I guess really more accurately, you could classify that as trading. And then the third thing was to talk about the Bitcoin dominance figure here. I really think that this is going to be the story or the important factor when it comes to crashes like these. The way that you can generate excess return is to take advantage of situations in which other cryptocurrencies crash against Bitcoin and pick them up for cheap. I think that's going to be an excellent opportunity for many people. If you have Bitcoin and moved into it prior to the crash, prior to dominance starting to spike again. So as usual. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that this is a stressful time in the market. If you would like to discuss the market with me, make sure that you check out my Steemit. I tend to be a little bit more interactive on there just because the number of comments is more manageable. And also there's a fiscal incentive for both you and I to post on the platform. So make sure that you check that out. Otherwise, as usual, leave a like, comment, and subscription. And you know, don't worry too much about situations like these. I mean, markets, are always going to be volatile, you know, cryptocurrencies exceptionally so. Make sure that you allocate yourself appropriately and stay frosty. Stay safe. Thank you for watching.